Good afternoon or evening, depending on when you're tuning into this. Uh, welcome to a little flute tip uh, that we're going to do. We're going to try this, guys. This is a, a new thing for me to do a live flute tip. I'm used to doing live workshops and live one-on-one -on -one lessons and group lessons, but I'm not used to doing this. So today we're going to talk about wetting out or watering out your flute, something that we all have dealt with, and it's a really big pain point. So I've broken down into three categories today I thought would be the best approach to this. Number one is uh, what you can do to help prevent it. Now there's nothing you can do to totally prevent it, unfortunately. Um, I will talk about another measure that uh, I recently discovered, uh, but we're gonna start with what you can do to help your flute not water out as quickly. And then we're gonna move into um, not necessarily why wet out happens, but some things to look at as far as construction. So um, you may notice that certain flutes of yours wet out faster than others. Um, and then we're going to um, look at some measures that you can do uh, to recover from wetting out. Um, so I'm going to pop over here and, uh, oh, it looks like comments are coming in. So if you guys can hear and see me okay, uh, just wave hi, and um, also drop in uh, the comments where you're tuning in from. I always love to see where um, where you guys are tuning in from. So we're gonna start with one of the most important things. Now, guys, I really love my coffee. I love coffee. I will sip on it um, all day while I'm doing stuff and making music, but it's probably not the best thing. So we wanna neutralize our palate as much as possible uh, before we play. Um, so that means uh, warm water does a really good job of neutralizing. Stay away from salty and sweet foods and drinks, beverages like that, soda, uh, carbonation, anything that's going to kick up your saliva glands. Um, give yourself some time. You know, it's like uh, before you, um, uh, after you eat, you know, don't go immediately swimming. Don't go immediately playing your flute either. Um, so that's number one, rule number one, stay away from that kind of stuff while you're, um, you're playing. The other thing that's really come up lately in one-on-one -on -one, um, sessions with students, everyone's been complaining about, Johnny, I'm watering out more. And I ask them, are you playing more? Uh, well, yes, of course, they're practicing. Um, the more you play, the more you're going to wet out. But also, um, depending on where you live, it's cooler right now. You know, it's January when we're filming this. Um, it's the, the dead of winter right now, and our rooms can be a little cooler than average, even if we have heat, uh, forced heat going into our houses. Uh, my room here is a little cooler, um, so my flutes are a little cooler, and then we have that contrast in temperature. Our breath is warm and moist, it's got a lot of moisture in it, and when we push that through a colder flute, it's really going to make the flute um, well, the flute's just responding to this, it's gonna water out. So one thing, a couple of considerations here would be, now don't place your flutes directly in sunlight um, to warm them up, that's a, that's a big no-no. They'll cook through the windows and the UV light. Uh, but one thing that I've done before is, um, when I'm on stage, when I'm getting ready to play something, while I'm just standing there talking to the audience, I will put the flute, uh, the bird part, this is the part that waters out. Um, I will put this part under my arm while I talk. And I'll hold the flute like this as I talk to the audience. It, my body heat is going to warm up the flute a little bit, so there's less of a chance of it watering out. It still will water out, but it'll happen, um, it won't happen as quickly. Others have used a heating pad on low, put a towel between um, on top of the heating pad, um, and then put your flutes on it, and you can cover over um, with um, the other part of the towel or another towel. Make sure it's on low. You don't want to cook your flutes. Um, just kind of warm them up a little bit. Um, so um, those are some things that you can do to help uh, your flute. Um, now when it comes to playing also, um, two things here that sometimes we don't even think about, but I want you to pay attention to the way that you play your flute, the way that you hold your flute. If when I play, I try to keep I look kind of straight ahead, and I can put my, my face down about 45 degrees. What I don't want to do, I don't want to look directly down. I don't want saliva to, if my mouth is pointing to the ground when I play and I'm kind of hunched over here, it hurts my neck a lot, 
but also moisture and that saliva can start to, gravity will pull it and it'll go right into your flute. So the best approach is to stay at a 45, you know, look straight ahead, point down a little bit, and that's a good, um, a good posture for playing as well. Uh, but it's really going to help because the moisture then is going to collect behind your teeth, which leads me to my next point, which is um, sometimes um, we have a hard time removing that moisture from our mouth, especially those that, you know, if your mouth is kind of, um, if it's full, if you're getting full. Um, so it's not easy to remove that while you're playing, but it's kind of a two-step process and I'll break it down this way. So as I'm playing my flute, and you know, moisture's collecting in my mouth, I'm starting to feel it pull up, like it could drip out a little bit. Um, we're woodwind players here, guys. So uh, we're gonna talk about saliva. We're gonna talk about these things. So when I'm doing this, what I want to do is I want to prep that saliva um, to um, get ready to remove. So it is pulling up at the back of my teeth and in between phrases, I'm going to pull it there and then um, in between my next phrase, I'm going to go ahead and swallow to remove that. And when you break it down and, and kind of collect it here and then remove it, it doesn't take you as long, you don't have to have as long of a pause in between your phrases when you do this kind of maneuver. It's kind of the same thing when you speak. Right now as I'm talking, saliva is pulling up in my mouth, I've got to stage it, and then during my next pause, I'm going to swallow it, and then I'm taking two little breaks and not a really long break. So that'll get you recovering a little bit faster. So these are measures that you can, you are in control of, um, but now we're going to move into something that maybe you're not in control of, and that looks like what's going on in the flute. So I, I, I looked through my flutes today, and, and I picked out a couple of things that I think would be really important as you look through your flute collection. Every flute is different. I say the flute is the boss, uh, truly is uh, the boss. So as I look at this, there's a couple of things that I want to point out. So one is if your flute, I'm going to, this is a JP Gomez flute, heart song flute. Um, and it's all about what's under the hood because this is where it wets out underneath here. So as I look at this, here's something that, that comes to my mind. So this flute, I'm going to try to get this focus on, push it in here. There we go. So this flute is, first of all, there's not a lot of ramp here. There's just a little bit, and that's that little beveled spot you see there. Um, and then the flue is the space between these two holes. And it's, it's quite long, and it's very flat. Um, in comparison to, well, I don't have another one, a short flue to show you. I'll show you on this, Dana Ross flute. This is a drone flute. The drone has nothing to do with it. We're going to pretend like it's a normal flute, okay? So this one... The Dana Ross flute is much more open under uh, the block here, and there's more of a graduated ramp, which can help and also hinder. Um, we try to look at, um, we try to visualize air as water. It's hard to see air. It's hard to see the wind when it blows. You see the trees moving, but you can't see the actual wind. You can see water flowing over a waterfall, you know, through the um, the rocks and such. So imagine if water were, I know we're talking about wetting out, we're talking about pushing water. We're not pushing water through your flute. But imagine how it travels is what we're getting at, how it travels through your flute. More of a ramp, you have the um, potential to push that moisture that collects in the slow air chamber, it's gonna push it over the ramp. If you don't have that ramp, it can pull up in your slow air chamber, which is an important thing that we're gonna talk about in the end here. But the length of the flu here and how flat it is also makes a difference. The other thing that makes a difference as well is how wide this flute or this flu is. Um, we got to think about, you know, if you're traveling on a two lane road or a three lane road, the two lane road, if you've got construction in one lane, it's going to get bogged down. If you are traveling on a three lane road and one lane gets bogged down, you still got two to go. 
So this is the same thing with the, um, the width of the flute. So we're going to talk about, you know, when I hold this flute here, we're talking about width this way, okay, the horizon. And the wider that is, A, more volume that that flute potentially has, but also less of a chance it has for watering out because there are more lanes for if one gets bogged down, the rest of it, you still have room to travel is what I'm getting at. My analogies sometimes aren't the best, so I apologize if <laughs> that's not a great one. Um, but the width here will make a big difference. And the length of the flu, the, the longer and flatter this is and the more narrow that it is, the more of a chance that flute's gonna water out a little quicker. There's one other thing about your flute that I wanna show you. I've got um, two, um, two blocks here, um, two different blocks here from two different flutes. And there's a theory here, and it's, it's a compromise. It's, it's a catch-22. So some flute makers will, on the bottom of their block, you see this one's laminated, and it's got cedar on the bottom and walnut on the top. The, the cedar on the bottom of this is unfinished. There's no finish on there, okay? Now what this will do, if this is unfinished, is this kind of acts like a sponge for a little while. This will absorb some of that moisture. So if I put this on my flute and I play for 10 minutes or so and I pull this back off, it's, it's going to look a little wet because it's absorbing that moisture in the area. Um, and the good thing about this is you can play longer without wetting out, but once it happens, that effect is gone and you no longer have that um, benefit. Now the other one is a block that is finished. Can you see the shine on that from the light? So the bottom of this block for the flute is finished. Now, moisture cannot penetrate this, so it will beat up and move away. The benefit for this is that um, it, 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 your flute may water out quicker, but it's also quicker to remove and get back to playing. Um, you're not going to hit that saturation point because it's just going to move right through it. Now this brings me to um, the last area. This is something that you can do. These are measures that you can do to recover from wetting out. So to recover from wetting out, we got to think about where we're at in the process. You know, if you're uh, if you're done playing, you've all you've all seen this. You know, you can take the 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 flute by the foot in, make sure nothing is around you, and give that thing a shake, um, and that force is going to pull it out. Um, the other thing is you should be removing your block and you know cleaning things up a little bit when you're done playing it. Um, let it dry out tie it back on, put it back on the rack. It's good practice to have. Um, but what if you're still playing? And I've had this happen before when I'm um, playing in, um, I'm playing outside, it's cool, or it's really humid, uh, like it is uh, in Florida. Um, and my flute water's out as I'm playing. So something I can do, I've, I've taken all the birds off of my flutes now. I got this one here. So something I can do is while I'm playing, in between phrases, what I can do if I, if I know my flute is watered out and I'm losing the tonality of it, um, then what I try to do is in between my phrases, I will draw back. I will suck back and that's gonna quickly remove. You know, some of us will put our fingernail in front or uh, obstruct the, the airflow here and, and, and blow it that way. Well, this is a measure that in between phrases, in between your phrases, you can draw it back and that will help you get to the end of the song. I've been playing before in a concert and I'm halfway through the song and I'm just like, oh no, it's happening. I'm wetting out the flute. And so, um, this is a measure that I've been able to use and it's been really helpful just to get me to the end. After that, I'm going to remove the block and uh, remove the moisture. Um, so that, those are some tips. I know I'm going down the list pretty quick here, but we'll have this video available on YouTube perpetually so you can come back and review. 
Um, but also, if you have a tip to share about wetting out, um, some of you are saying um, that you're using uh, beeswax, um, I guess on the bottom of the, um, on the bottom of the block. Um, you can try that too. Again, that's kind of like the finish on the, um, on the bottom of the block on some of these flutes. Take a look at your flute, and, and here's what I really want to stress to you, is become aware. Become aware of the flute construction by some of the things that we talked about today. Because just to have a problem, we've got we've to find a solution for that. And that's what I'm, I hope that I can help you with, is to find those solutions. But you've got to be asking yourself, well, why does this happen? Now, how can I fix it? Uh, Johnny, what do you got for me today? So I hope that you have uh, enjoyed this video. If you have, subscribe to my channel. We're going to be doing more of these. I hope this was a pretty smooth operation. So let me know if you've got a tip to share. Uh, or if you have a question about something, drop that in the comments below the chat while we're live or the comments below after this thing uh, is over. I thank you guys for joining us here today. Super excited to do this. Um, and I can't wait to uh, uh, talk more. Oh, hold on. One other thing. Yes, I'm going to be doing a flute review on a flute in, I got to look at my schedule. Uh, but coming up, we've got a flute review from John Stilwell and the um, Wet Out Protection. Um, I'm not going to spoil the review. I want you, uh, I want you to watch that one. So um, it's coming soon. It's coming in the next few weeks, uh, I believe. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, feel free to share this with your other flutey friends. And I look forward to seeing you in another cover song video, original song video. Flute tip, flute tutorial, flute review. We're going to do a lot here this year. So welcome to 2021, guys, and we'll see you next time. Take care.